Welcome back. The Jacob Zuma Foundation is once again attacking Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. This comes as the Constitutional Court says it will hear the contempt case against the former president on the 25th of March. The foundation is accusing Zondo of abusing his position as second in command of the Constitutional Court. He says he's instructing his subordinates to ban the laws in order to ensure that Zuma is found guilty. Zuma was summoned to answer to allegations that he enabled corruption during his tenure in office. Zondo has asked the Constitutional Court for an urgent order to declare him in contempt of court and sentence him to two years in prison if found guilty. The foundation says according to the law, the punishment should either be six months imprisonment or a fine and not the two years that have been asked for by Zondo. Well, for more of this and some analysis from a legal perspective, I'm joined by Elton Hart from the University of Johannesburg's law faculty. Elton, good morning and thank you very much uh, uh, for your time. Uh, is Zondo and the Commission bending the law as uh, uh, stated by the Jacob Zuma Foundation? Morning, brother. And if one looks at the legislation that um, Deputy Chief Justice Zondo is using, is an old act from 1947, and they are within the parameters of the act that the things that they are currently doing, the act stipulates that this is what should happen if a witness refuses to come and testify at the commission. They're not bending it. The problem is maybe in that they approach the constitutional court directly. Now, there is only in special circumstances that you can actually access the constitutional court directly because the commission has the same stance as a high court. So, obviously, if a person fails to comply with the rulings of the commission, then obviously the next court would be the SCA, not directly the constitutional court, unless you can prove that there is a constitutional issue at play here. So, maybe it might be that the Jacob Zuma Foundation feel that is where he's abusing his powers as second in command of the apex court. So how else should he have done it? The thing is, like, with the Commission's Act, it's now an old piece of legislation, and obviously it still speaks about six months' imprisonment or a fine of 50 pounds. Now, this thing was uh, promulgated and enacted in 1947. So I think the legislature in itself failed to actually update that piece of legislation as times progress. They should have... Um, actually also say, because the legislation in itself is also vague, that it doesn't actually address and give exact procedures when a witness doesn't come. It just says, now does it, it, it seems that it says the commission can hand down the sentence as the legislation is written now. But that will be then you are judge and jury in your own case. And that can uh, bring about a constitutional challenge that the excess you can, and then the commission is the one that's imposing the fine, but also asking the witness to testify, so yes, judge and jury in your own case. So there might be the problem that they can challenge it on a constitutional level. So I think they should have actually updated the legislation to make um, a, a leeway for this. And I think what Jacob, uh, the, the, the Zondo Commission should have done is most probably say, let's go to the SCA and say that this man is not, or maybe another high court where you have like maybe three judges sitting to say he breached this, and now we institute criminal proceedings and take him to a criminal court because if you breach or if you um, disobey a law, it's a criminal offense in the country. Then you open a criminal docket and start it off at a district court for bail application. Then you go to the necessary court that has jurisdiction to hear that specific crime, be it a regional but, court or a high court. But, 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 but Elton, the, 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 yeah, the 1947 law is existence. It's there. You can't do much about that. But... Are they accusing Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo of abusing the law, as you said, because he went directly to the Constitutional Court? But where else should he have gone to? I mean, he could not have gone to the High Court, in my mind, because it is the Constitutional Court that found him to be in contempt of its order. Now, but then that's already where he is already latching on and saying that he abused his powers. Because normally what happens, say, for instance, but then is... Um, charged with an offense, maybe say contravention of a, a, a traffic bylaw or a traffic laws. Then a docket will be opened at a police station and then it will be sent to a district court, a magistrate's court, which is a district court. It will be sent there so that they can determine should Braden be given bail or not. And then from there, they will now determine is this a matter that falls within a district court for hearing 
a regional court for hearing or a high court for hearing. Those three courts. Then once they've decided, okay, this matter is only the high court that has jurisdiction to hear this matter, then that criminal trial for transgressing a law will be heard by the high court. So now, if the high court then makes a ruling and there's some constitutional issues attached to that thing, then you now can go to the SCA to say, confirm the constitutionality of this ruling. And if you're not happy, then you can appeal to the Apex Court. Now, just going straight to the Apex Court, you need to have direct access. So you okay. need to have permission to have direct access to that. So court. I think that's where they are playing. That's where they are playing, and they're saying he's abusing his office. Finally, and very briefly, because uh, my producer, Zama, is telling me I'm out of time. Uh, we're out of time. But this is the first time, Elton, from what I understand, that the in the history, in its history rather, that the Apex Court has, is facing a situation where an order it has issued is being disobeyed. Surely you don't want, you don't want to be going there and there, you want to go straight to, to the court. It's the first time. Yes, it's the first time, but I think it is also a first time that one would just go, also just go straight to the Apex Court and not being clear as to was direct access even granted. So, I would think that the Deputy Chief Justice, he knows the law better than anyone can tell him. And I think if he just took the, the, the normal procedures that we as lawyers know, we wouldn't have been sitting at the stop street now where you feel now the Constitution is being challenged by an individual in the country. Okay, so the foundation could be justified to think he's abusing his, his position as second in command Definitely of the court. There is always that. It's a matter of interpretation, and they interpret it in that way. Thank you very much, Elton, for your time this morning and your insights and interpretation on that developing story. Elton Hart from the University of Johannesburg. We'll see.